whoever asks a question, you can just, you know, talk to us and like don't edit yourself. It's meant to be a positive thing. You yeah. Know, and and um, I'm sure you get it. Okay, I'm gonna pull this out of it. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how you feel about doing this? I'm really excited to do this. It's always like a little scary, I don't know. Cause as much as like, as much as I like preach self-love, it's still hard to practice it mm -hmm. when it's yourself. Can you um, talk about what your style says about you? I'm a really big believer in wearing what's most comfortable to you. It doesn't matter what it is um, because you look best in that. I used to wear like crazy 70s bell bottoms and like crop tops. I love dressing like that, but especially when I'm working too, like if I'm shooting, I kind of just want to blend into the background. And like, that's usually how I take photos. I like hang out with people so they don't really like notice that I'm doing it. I actually really want to be a dancer. Um, and I had a horrible injury and I had to get surgery and then the doctors were like, you can't dance anymore, which was really intense for me. As I talk, I'm like moving so much because I've always, for me, that's like a way of release. I had that part where I was struggling with my body where like physically I couldn't do things and then I also had pressures of like looking a certain way. My dance teacher was like, your hips are too wide. You can never be a ballet dancer. And like my physical like bones really warped my the vision of myself. I got in trouble by my photo teacher. I took all these photos of my friends in like nature, like I guess like half clothed, but he really didn't like that. And he was like, this is unacceptable and whatever. But then there's this dude in my class who was taking, wow. taking these photos of girls like in sexy outfits with like, um, <laughs> with like boxing gloves, like boxing each other, like really like um, very male gazy and I remember him being like, yeah, you did, you did a good job because like you shot the like hottest girl in school or whatever, which is crazy. Like one of our assignments actually, which like shouldn't be on the curriculum was to like take a photo of yourself before and after and like airbrush and Photoshop oh yourself. It's also crazy because it's like assuming that we all subscribe to whatever. One thing. One thing. Because then everyone would be photo, like it's just so weird. It's such a weird assignment. Can you talk a little bit more about like what like your insecurities body wise occur? Yeah. Like how that manifested in your life? I really started in middle school for me. I think that time period was especially crazy mm -hmm. for media and magazines. The female role models were like the Pussycat Dolls or like Paris Hilton because I was did so badly in school. Like I would always have to be taken out of class and put mm -hmm. into this special ed class, which was also like humiliating for me. I had to repeat like grade eight. I was like, what am I good at if I'm not good at school? Like if I'm not smart? Cause I was just like, I'm not smart then. I guess if I'm doing badly in school, my, what I'm good at relies on what I look like. I was always reading 17 and Cosmo Girl and like the articles were just about getting a boyfriend or looking great. I've never had bad skin, but I remember being like, I, because it would be like buy this and this and this product. And I would and like, I remember using like oxy pads because that was like the thing then. Like drenching my face in it, which I think probably ruined my skin. And like trying to prevent whatever. I, was, I just did what I was told. I've always been like skinny and blonde and whatever. So I was like, oh, look, I look like what I'm supposed mm -hmm. to. And then when I got into high school, I grew like hips. That little like deviation was so, I was like, well, I don't fit into this anymore. So like, I don't know what to do. And like, that's after like, I started to grow hair and I was going through puberty, but I was being told to revert back to what I was like as a child. I just lost total control of my, the view of my body and I had a really bad eating disorder. I just, just stopped eating. I was sitting in the shower, like, like this, like curled up and I was like, I can feel all my bones. I don't know, I just can't imagine being smaller than this. When I started creating photos, I always, I always had these strong, feelings towards like, I really just wanted to be my own person and strong and be like sexually empowered, I guess. And I didn't really know what that was, not shaving. That was kind of the first step towards accepting my body as it was. I mean, I never really shaved that much. 
but I did shave my armpits um, and my legs and I just grow out all my hair and then I was like well I'm gonna start wearing like tank tops at school and just like just try to get used to it and it's in the beginning it was weird and hard because I was so like embarrassed of like I'd be like oh my god people are looking at me weird and whatever and that did happen and people would like be like Ugh, and say things now I totally it's a second thought so I'm like if I can do that with one part of my body, I should be able to do it for the rest because it's just deprogramming yourself. Did you basically like sh shave your like pubic area? No, I never really did. I guess I would like trim, and it was always something that I'd be like, oh, I'm going to the beach, like I'm so embarrassed, like because I never really liked to shave, so I just like didn't really know what to wear because it was embarrassing. And now, what do you, now you don't. Now I just don't care. One of my assignments was to just do a research project on whatever you wanted to do. And at that point I was like, well, I'm gonna do it on body hair. And I ended up doing this like in-depth research on it and found that there's, there's no scholarly text on it, specifically women's body hair. And that the text that is written on it, it's just about, like it's nothing medical or nothing about like what it's supposed to do, it's just about how it's like excessive. It's just something that is so not talked about, it's insane, like all shaving ads would not, there's no hair in the ads. It doesn't even start with hair, they're shaving nothing. Wow. And I guess it's kind of the same thing with like menstrual blood. Like in the ads it'd be like a blue dot or like wouldn't, they don't really talk about it. So when I like got my period, I was like, show my dad, I'd be like, look, there's so much blood, like full of blood. He'd be like, great, like you would, wasn't, it wasn't something I had to hide. That conversation was open, it wasn't a thing. I was finally like, wait, why do I do this every day? And why do I buy things every day to get rid of something? that my body is like just trying to grow. I mean, it's just a business, it's a market. It's a market right. of like femininity. If I want to be feminine, I have to be like this, and then masculine is like this, and it shouldn't. These two things shouldn't exist like that. I think the most important thing is to create images that aren't being shown or seen. There's always this one quote that has always stuck with me. You can't be what you can't see. When you're not being represented, it's like you're not a real person. When do you feel the most vulnerable? I always kind of put myself out there, so I'm always vulnerable, I guess. And like I'm vulnerable right now, because I'm telling you guys a lot of things. I think being vulnerable is also being strong. You hurt yourself more by putting up a shield. In your body is a good place to be. Why is that? I don't know, it's exciting seeing time pass and things happen, and like that's what I think is so cool about aging and lines and everything that happens to your body, because they're like physical that we're all experiencing. When I was learning about the sexualization of young girls, it's this, it goes hand in hand with the desexualization of older women because we're so obsessed with, I guess, with youth and so obsessed with being this one age that to a certain point, like women between, I don't know, it's only like age like 15 to like 20 that exist and then beyond that point, it's not real. So it's something that I, was really interesting to me and I always think about. And I guess I'm just learning as I grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel now? I feel good. I love, I, love, uh, I love talking, I love sharing stories with people and I love being able to talk about my feelings. <laughs> so, good.